morning, my faithful loyal YouTube subscribers. Today it is Monday. It is January the 6th. The year is 2019. And um, I'm back to my normal schedule. I'm not rushing out of the house to run up to the hospital and all this good stuff. I will get there eventually today. I'm going to get dressed, go to the gym. I said the reason why I was so happy that Earl was in the rehab place and my gym is literally right next door up the street. So this morning I got up, got dressed, do a quick video, run my ass to the gym and go see him. And I have to get back to a normal schedule so I can have my sanity and get to the gym, do something I like to do. And like I said, the gym is right there. So anyway, if you watch the news in Atlanta, which I know a lot of y'all don't watch the news, you could y'all say, it's the news is so, it's so depressing and sad. I don't want to watch it. It's, it's very shocking to me. There are a lot of people live in Atlanta and they don't watch the news. They have no clue what's going on around the city. If you don't watch the local news, you, you will miss out on a lot. No matter how sad and depressing it might be. It's not sad and depressing. I mean, the news is just reality for me. It is reality of what's going on. Late last night, when I left the hospital late last night, that damn Mercedes I was, I was driving, he went to beeping and buzzing. I said, what is all this racket this car is making? And I'm looking like, what is it saying? He was out of gas. I said, oh, shit. Now, I had been ignoring that beeping and buzzing for some time because I didn't know what it was. There's so many bells and whistles in that damn car. And so, as I started looking around, I said, uh-oh. And the team popped up saying, you need to find a gas station. So... Well, I was cutting through was through the area I was cutting through was the hood. I was like, well, I'll make it through this damn hood to get to a gas station. But then over there off Glenwood, there is a um a shell gas station. If you've ever watched the news a few weeks ago, there was a young an older woman. She was seventy four years of age, she was vacuuming her car, and someone stole <laughs> beat her up and stole her car with her dog in it. Um they her dog was missing. She was in the hospital. They did find her dog. They did get her, her, her back with her dog. And they found her car. They get her car back. But she was in the hospital. She had been uh, injured, bad, severely injured. And they had made they made three or four arrests of some teenagers who um, did this to this woman. I got gas at that gas station last night. And you better believe I was standing up there on nigga patrol. I'm looking up and round and down and back by the corner. I got out that car, locked the door. I was watching all around there. Because sometimes when you're getting gas, you might be trying to make sure you get your Kroger Plus uh, discounts and make sure you, you know, you're punching your... I, I pay very close attention to my surroundings because not only has that at that gas station, which is a shell gas station, the only one in the area, um, that I could have made it to without having to push that car up the street. There have been murders there, assaults, carjackings. So I was, but it was about mm, 8.39. And there were a lot of people there. Look, so I was able to do my nigga patrol and they were going to nigga patrol too. And we all looking at each other like, okay, nigga, I see you, what you up to? Atlanta's crime has gotten off the chain over the past few years is getting worse as more as the wealth increases in the city as more gentrification is playing a huge role in the city you have more a lot of the people who have wealth and they have a lot of money they have nice homes then you got people who ain't got shit you got the poverty is at a all-time lows and i'm not meaning lows is you got a lot a lot of poor people mired in poverty within the Atlanta metropolitan area. They're being forced out, but they're still here. They ain't being forced out of the state or out of the country. They are still here and they will kill you. So last week, the mayor, the city of Atlanta police department decided they won't do police chases anymore. They're not going to chase police these heathens through the streets of Atlanta because they've killed at least over the past year, I'm, or the past year or two, I'm going to say somewhere, now, and I could be, this might be overestimating, but I'm going to say between five to ten people, innocent people, and like I said, I could be wrong, I'm just kind of rounding up. Five to ten people, at least over the past 12 to 18 months, have been killed by people, and innocent people killed by people being chased by the police. Now, and that, that, that number could be, you know, just in the whole area, but you might be somewhere between five to 10, that's what I'll just leave it at. That's still an extreme amount of, of people. One lady was killed last week, she was only 54 years of age, driving down the street on her way to work, 
when these young heathens in a Chrysler um, Hellcat or something that stole they stole the car and the police got behind him. He wasn't chasing them. He was just taking a tag to see if, if it was the stolen car they were looking for. And those young men took off, smashed into this woman's car and killed her instantly. Over there off Donnelly Howe, Bankhead Island. Those for those who know, who know Atlanta. Not exactly where she was killed at. I drive through there all the time. So, the city of Atlanta police have said, we're not going to chase behind these heathens no more. I have mixed feelings about that. Obviously, police chases have not netted. I've seen, I've, yeah, I, don't, I don't know about you all, but I've been around on numerous occasions where police chases have taken place. I'd be driving a street and car would fly by. I'm like, wow, what's going on? Next time you see police, I'd run, 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 fly by chasing behind these people. I've seen that on numerous occasions. And it puts the general public's innocent people's lives at risk. So I do think it's a smart idea. I don't think they should have announced it. I don't think the line of police should have they made that public. Because now these niggas are going to go after these young, buck wild teenagers. They're going to be out of control now in more ways than one, at least in the city of Atlanta. Now, if you live in Atlanta, you know, see Atlanta, you have several different jurisdictions. You have see Atlanta police, you have state of Georgia police, you have the Fulton County Sheriff's Department. Now, I don't know what those other two organizations, the Fulton County Sheriff's Department and the state. Georgia State Police are going to they probably continue to chase behind suspects. You got DeKalb County Police, DeKalb County Sheriff's Department, Fulton. You got so many different police agencies. Martyr Police, they're chased behind your ass too. It's funny because I saw a guy get pulled over by the Martyr Police recently, and it was a big scene. I don't know what, it, what I don't know why this Martyr guy pulled this guy over, but it was a huge scene going on. This is the city where I was leaving the hospital one night. But you got a lot of police out here. In Atlanta. So many different agencies. Are they all not going to chase behind these fools? Or just City of Atlanta police? I would love to know what the Cab County, because the Cab County, the three worst counties, I would say, oh, they all getting bad, truth be told. Because Henry County is bad now, Stockbridge is bad, Conyers is bad, all that shit horrible now. Um, but the Cab County, um, Clayton County, I, if I had to choose the, the top three, Fulton, Clayton, and DeKalb would probably be at the top of the list for police chase activity and crime that's pretty bad. And the question would be, is well, I wonder what DeKalb police, I don't know what their policies are on bad because they have had, DeKalb police have had some incidents where people have been killed um, by suspects running from the police or police officers chasing after suspects in the cars, um, their cars inadvertently hit somebody and killed the police officer cars. So it's a request, good, good, it'd be very interesting to see how this plays out. Why is the crime rate so, spiking so high here in Atlanta? Why did DeKalb County have all time high murder rates last year in 2019? Why is the crime skyrocketing so high? Poverty. These black folks are hurting here. And I keep telling y'all this, but y'all don't want to hear it. People do want to believe that everyone is doing well here in Atlanta, and that is not true. And it's being really seen with young families. These mothers with no husbands, raising children alone. They have no help from the state, from the city, from nowhere. And this has been going on, it's gotten quite worse over the past 10, 15, 20 years. And they're being forced out. Nobody wants to help them anymore. They just rather see them gone. They didn't shut down all the homeless shelters, and there really is no place for a lot of people to go get help. And they live in these horrible apartments. If you watch the news every week, there's some horrible car apartment company say, "Wow, people are living there." Yeah, people are living there, and they living in poverty like you wouldn't believe. Lack of education, lack of opportunities for these young folks. So. That's why the crime rate is so high. And anybody can get their hand on a gun in Atlanta. I've had people call me whilst I got a gun for sale. Why are you calling me telling me you got a legal gun for sale but I can go to the gun store and buy one legally? I'm like, mm, I don't like need to buy a gun. And they sell these guns. People sell guns here on the street just like selling an iPhone. I'm dead ass serious. I know a lot of folks who buy these illegal guns and they use them for their own protection. I bought this gun. 
And I, I remember my friends used to buy these guns. I'd be like, what y'all gonna do with these illegal guns? They catch you with this gun. You don't know where that gun has been and what it's been used for. But a lot of people, just keeping it real, a lot of people buy these illegal guns. You can get a gun anywhere. Anywhere. They don't do background checks when you're buying a gun in the middle of the night. And I, um, I had a friend who used to sell guns. I mean, he, he ran around selling guns, gun trafficking. People don't give a fuck these days. They do all kinds of illegal shit. But anyone can get a hand, their hands on a gun legally or illegally, and they do harm. When people get to drinking and doing drugs and get high, these guns are used to kill people. That's why the Cab County had such a high murder rate last year. And domestic violence has really gotten bad um, in DeKalb County and particularly, I don't know why these, the, the, the domestic violence has skyrocketed, but maybe, maybe it's always been there. And maybe the news and social media just highlight, highlighted it more. A lot of murder suicides taking place, especially from black folks. I'm like, wow, I've been really relatively surprised by the amount of domestic violence um, between black couples where they shoot and kill each other and harm each other, just kind of sad. But of course, we're too busy screaming at Jesus instead of going to get some mental health therapy. And that's another reason, issue why crime is so high in the Atlanta metropolitan area. You got a lot of crazy people here who are not getting any help from nowhere. Where are they living from? Who gonna help them? Where are they gonna go? Who gonna give them the help? There is no way. I mean, if you can't financially afford to pay for your own psychiatric help, there's, there's very little help you're going to get. And if you think the court system is trying to help these people, they can't help them all because they don't have the funding to do so. So these young teens, particularly between the ages of 13 and 17 and 18, all the way up to 19, 20, you know, early, late, they, they're out of control here. They will kill you for any reason. And they're reckless. Those teenagers who killed that 54-year-old woman last week on Bankhead Highway racing away from the police in that stolen Dodge Charger, Hellcat, jumped out that car and ran. That innocent woman was on her way to work. She didn't even know what hit her. Some heathens in a stolen car. She died right there on the scene. She didn't even make it to, they did put an ambulance, but she was, David, she was dead when they got out the car. That could have been anybody's bomb going. That could have been me going to work. That could have been any innocent person driving down the street, minding their business. So, again, I think the Atlanta Police Department did right, did the right thing by saying we're not going to chase behind you niggas no more. However, I think they probably should not have announced that. Um, and it's just so odd to me how these cars get stolen and these guys can drive these cars for days. I know a friend of mine about a year ago had their car carjacked at a gas station. And um, um, got their car carjack at a gas station, and these people stole this woman's BMW, and they drove that car for um, weeks before they were uh, they ditched that car, and she got it back. And the insurance company was the car was so tore up they just totaled it out. Brand new BMW, they stole which they did one of them slider crimes as they call it. Uh, you, <laughs> You'd have to be pretty damn stupid to pull into a gas station and leave your key in the car and walk in there and pump your gas or do anything in Atlanta because they will slide their ass in your car and take your vehicle if they if that car is running or they can start it. And a lot of people have these remote control cars. You might be standing outside your car with your key next to you. I don't know how this works. I've never really had this issue because when I get out of my car, I lock them doors. As soon as I get out of my car, I can quit and put them keys in my pocket. You're going to be sliding in none of my cars because I know what these niggas are. I, I, yeah, I've learned. I've learned the hard way here in Atlanta about these niggas and how deadly and dangerous they are. When I was getting that gas last night, you better believe I was watching my surroundings very close. And that punk gas stopped now. Here's the sad part. I got everything done, pumping the gas, the gas is going slow. I'm like, what? So the guy next to me, he's like, man, why is yours going slow? I said, man, this stuff going slow as hell. And that man said, man, we going to get killed out here trying to get some damn gas. I said, I started, <laughs> that's what he told me. I said, oh, shit, he ain't getting no damn like it. Look where we are. The shell on Glenwood, the deadly shell, murder shell. It's a, it's a damn shame. It's, kind of, it's a shame that we have to be in it. We be scared to go, scared to go to a gas station in our neighborhood. But it's just the truth. I guess the pump so slow. I just stood there and I said, "Well, shell's gonna fill it up." 
It took a minute. I was all stood there. A lot of us standing there trying to get gas. We were all in the same predicament. Gas was running. So yeah, I'm sure you all have experience. You go to gas station. I guess maybe too many people were getting gas at one time, and it was slowly coming out. Yes, and man, said we're gonna get killed out here. So, I like I said, I really think the Atlanta police shouldn't have announced that. However, let's see. I'm, I'm very curious to see if the Georgia State Patrol. You know, yeah, you got so many police department, Georgia State Patrol, Georgia um, State University Police. You got, um, what's it, Emory got police over there. You got um, uh, Georgia State, Georgia, what is the name of that, that, that university down there in Midtown, Georgia State, and then I can't, but they all have police departments, and I've seen them all. So the question would be, does, is this, will, this, will this have an impact on all these departments? I don't think Georgia State Patrol is going to stop chasing these niggas down the street, though. I don't think that's going to happen. But see, Atlanta police have decided they're going to sit on the sidelines for now. Might be a good thing. Might help save people's lives. Um, um, maybe. But I think ultimately, the city of Atlanta needs to find some way to stop all this crime in the city. I begin dealing with the root of the issue, the poverty in this city. You'll never correct the crime that's going around in Atlanta unless you deal with the poverty and families in disarray. And they're getting worse and worse. No help, no public assistance, just chaos and confusion in these streets, deadly streets of Atlanta. And everybody's ignoring it. All we see are big, pretty buildings going up, nice townhouses and real estate skyrocketing. And But underneath all that is a festering problem. The underworld of Atlanta is horrible. And like I say, the crime is spreading deeper into places like Conyers and Rockdale County, Stockbridge, um, Newton County. All those places are experiencing high crime because you now it's just the Douglasville is horrible out there. Gwinnett, parts of Gwinnett, parts of Cobb. So it's a, it's a bad situation here, and it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse as the cost of rent skyrocket, the cost of food and gas and everything continues to be high. The lack of opportunities for these young people continues to dry up. Nothing will change. This is what these politicians need to be discussing. These people running for president and politicians running for mayor and stuff like that, they need to be discussing crime. They can't keep ignoring it. We can't keep ignoring it and focus on something as if it doesn't exist. DeKalb County got a serious murder problem on their hand. They can't ignore it in 2020. They're going to have to tackle that problem and find out some way to get um, to, to, to end that violence out there. But, you know, everybody's blind to and act like they don't see it. So a lot of people don't pay attention because we don't watch the news because it's so depressing. We don't want to be depressed because we here in Atlanta have a good time and party. You know, there was um, a shootout at Compound on Saturday night. Um, and four people got shot at this nightclub. You can't even go to a club here in Atlanta without some type of daily violence going on. Whether it's a house party or a nightclub or some type of event, everybody go grab a gun and start shooting. And it's just getting out of control. Whether it's an Airbnb party or a house party or a nightclub or weddings. I mean, it's just crazy. And it's, this problem, prob, this issue is probably nationwide. So, you know, it's not just, it's just, it's, a, it's an urban problem, I believe, in the inner cities. Well, anyway, I'm going to go up here and get dressed and get to this gym. I use the bathroom first. Um, today it is Monday. It is January 6th, the year 2020. I think I said that at the beginning of the before. I hope I didn't say 2019. I know we're in the whole new year. So y'all don't have to remind me we're in 2020. I know. January, Monday, January 6th, 2020. Get out there and enjoy your day. And I'll speak to y'all later. Let me get out of here and enjoy my day. Get to the gym and some other things I need to do before I go visit her at the hospital. I'm out. Bye.